Hello, everyone. I'm so excited today to have Alexis with us from Funky Monkey Yoga. And we're going to speak today about two topics that we both adore, literacy with children's books and yoga and how we bring those two things together to enhance and enrich the yoga practice. So first of all, thank you so much for being here, Alexis. I'd love to for you to share with our community your background, your work, and your, your passion. Well, thank you, Giselle, for for having me um, here and interviewing me. It's a, a blessing and an honor. Um, so, uh, yeah, I have been um, working in the field of early childhood education for just over 18 years. I have a degree in early childhood education. And um while I was probably eight years into my early children education field, um, I realized that I would be able to actually have my dream, and that was teaching children's yoga. And I had wanted to do that really from when my son was born. Um, he was born in 2000. Um, but at the time, there there really wasn't very many children's yoga teacher trainings around. So that got put on hold and then um in 2013 I actually did my 95 hour my registered children's yoga training uh with radiant child yoga okay. and um it was it was just amazing I was also a registered uh adult yoga teacher as well before that and um so I then went on to do probably about three or four other um, trainings and um, they were actually a uh, couple of the trainings were just really level ones of different trainings. Um, I did do street yoga, which um, sadly isn't around anymore. That's actually working with uh, children and youth who are dealing with homelessness and addiction and, and trauma. Um, and so that gave me a really great um, foundation into that population. And then um, I think it was back in 2014, I came across this uh, program that was called uh, Move With Me Yoga Adventure. Oh, yeah. And I don't think that that's around anymore. I actually tried to research um, and that really not just gave me the yoga, um, but it also gave me the movement because they have their training in brain gym. Um, there's a lot of uh, kinesiology in it. Um, they also bring in Qigong. Um, and, uh, I even had to write down some of the stuff because, um, developmental optometry, occupational therapy, creative play, mm -hmm. um, and their training actually incorporates a lot of the curriculum from Head Start as well. So with all of that, um, I have been able to really, um, produce and create a really unique um, yoga um, program um, that um, I have actually now put into a teacher training that is specifically for early childhood educators. Um, the reason why that I've specifically to that group and not yoga teachers is that coming from an early childhood education background um, that I, I can bring the, the skills from that background and yoga and movement and combine them all, all together. So it's a really enriched, unique program. Yeah. And the great thing about it is by offering it to early childhood educators is that they're already 51% of the way into the program right. because they already have yeah. that background they're working with the children they know the children that they work with and um the program that i developed is that it can be used in any type of classroom environment uh working with kiddos with different learning and physical abilities right. um to you know child in-home daycare providers, child care centers, preschools, head starts. Um, and 
it it's a training and a method that at the end once they've done the training is that they actually get to own yeah their, the program they get to use it of of ways that it's going to work specifically with with their children um and the other part of the tr program because i have an extensive adult yoga background um i'm a 500 hour i work a lot with uh, people's posture and alignment um i have add-on certifications in osteoporosis um, arthritis healthy aging injury prevention so that it's it's there's going to be components in there that are also going to be for the um the the teachers you know not every teacher can get down on the ground um so i'm going to be providing variations to you know to poses to movement that the teachers can can do as well and the great thing about the training as well is that not only are the kiddos going to really benefit from it but it's also going to be beneficial for um the 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 educators as well because it's going to bring in mindfulness um yeah. and also lead on to awareness yeah. um and they're going to be able to really look at books in an in a new perspective and not just books but really any literary material that is brought into the um to the the classroom um yeah. and also visual um you know photographs artwork yeah right um and and you know um and what you're talking about there too is like you said you've got a classroom where they already have the curriculum and they'll be able to customize how you do it now today i really want to talk to you about literacy in particular mm -hmm. The preschool classrooms, early childhood classrooms are already doing story time. So it's not an extra thing that they have to add to their plate, but they're already having story time. So you can add some books. So what would you say from your experience, what would you say the benefit of really adding books, children's books into a kid's yoga experience would be, for example? Um, so the benefit, and, and it's actually been researched um, uh, that when we add books and movement together it actually takes the children's learning to a 95 percent higher level that that body connection um is is just a great way for children to learn and especially the books that were that the teachers are already reading are all already developmentally appropriate yeah. uh, for their for their kiddos, and so I'm just adding a new component to that of where they get to add out act out right. what's in the books I love it. into yoga and movement poses. Yeah, I love um, it. and depending upon um the the length of how you want to construct um you know the the yoga and movement um in in the training i give about three or four different uh variations of lengths like there's the full yoga and movement adventure which is normally about 30 to 45 minutes depending upon the age um and the size of the group and then we have yoga snacks which are maybe three to five poses and they can be done at any time of the day you know whenever you want to incorporate them yeah. um, and then we have transitional poses which may be one or two poses that are used in those times of where you might be transitioning from indoor to outdoor so you've got kids putting clothes you know coats on and shoes and as you know some kids get those on really quicker where others are you know like a lot slower and so it's okay how can you help those kids who are all ready to go outside because they start to get fidgety if they're waiting for um you know their friends it may be an issue of where 
there has to be all the teachers inside. So a teacher can't take some of the kids, other kids outside that are already ready. So how can you help those mm. kids that are waiting there getting fidgety um, and, and bringing in some yoga poses that can help with self-regulation, breathing, creativity, um, and and so an example of a story that you've added some yoga poses to so to share with us yeah um so let's see I actually have the book that we're going to that you have okay. given very kind permission for me to use in the training the uh Elizabeth and the Magnolia Fairy mm -hmm. um and so in this book um you know we had the fairy pose, we we had gnomes. Um, and then um, to give you an idea of with the, the movement where they're climbing the ladder, mm -hmm. um, a lot of that is incorporated with brain gym of where you're bringing, you know, opposite mm -hmm. that cross body. Mm -hmm. And so climbing the ladder was lifting the left arm up lifting the right leg up and and it's done slowly so that you know children can watch you and understand depending upon what your age you know they're gonna run up the ladder really quickly or they might be slow it's it's you know really across the board but it it's a great way for kiddos to connect mm. what is happening in the book and bringing it in into their bodies. Yeah. And, and I love how you've chosen fun. that book in particular, because most of our books have yoga poses that are connected, right? But yeah, a book that's part of our yoga principles collection. So there aren't any yoga poses, but I love that you're bringing the idea of character education. So there's an, an SEL component, right? And you're talking about their emotions, right? So there's a lesson that way and you're adding your own poses, which is probably more like what preschool teachers, early childhood teachers have. They have a whole bunch of books already in their classrooms that they can grab and it could be more of a mindfulness moment or a calming moment, or it could be lending itself to movement. Say it's a jungle theme or a forest theme, whatever like that. So I love how you're looking at a book saying, this is what I want to share with the children. How can I add yoga poses to it? Right. It's exactly. And that's really where it comes back to, you know, the the whole foundations of early childhood education is what is the objective? Right. Um, you know, because it's not like, oh, we're gonna take this book and 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 read it and see what happens. It's going in there with an objective, you know, are you already using this book, you know? are the what are the interests of the children in the book yeah. um and are you using this book in like maybe a project that the children have been working in um or is it a book that is part of your you know required curriculum right. um and so looking at the objectives and also seeing that you know the book might not be um adequate for a 30 to 45 minute you know um yoga and movement adventure maybe it lends itself more to yoga snacks maybe there's components in the book that would be really important to bring in for transitional time yeah. um so you're you're always going back to the fundamentals of of early childhood education I love it now do you have a story because obviously we love stories here kids yoga stories <laughs> do you have a story of either yourself or one of your teachers that had an experience of writing of, of adding movement to a story and and how it went yeah um you know I was thinking about that and you know I I have so many experiences but this one particular experience it was um a couple of summers ago and um, right when we were, you know, really still dealing with with COVID and how things were going to map out and everything. And um, I was actually working uh, part time in this in one of the daycares that I uh, go to. And we had um, we had been reading a lot of nature books um, and the provider has a really 
just amazing um, garden that just has lots of plants there's trees there's lots of things for the you know it's it's a really sensory adventure for the kiddos and um so we had gone outside and in and in the book um there was about a woodpecker and so we had done the woodpecker pose and we put movement into it and the kids also love to to make the noises of of the you know the the birds and the woodpecker and then fly around like them and uh so we had gone outside and one of the girls she was standing um there's a group of uh, a, a kind of like a small woodland area opposite the daycare and she said oh Miss Alexis Miss Alexis listen and we heard a woodpecker and so another little boy came over and then another uh kiddo came over and what was ironic was that I had I was just doing my forest uh therapy certification at the time and it was like we had this whole mini forest therapy experience for the kids while they're sitting there listening to the woodpecker and then I you know I ask them very open-ended questions. You know, where, where do you think the woodpecker is? And of course they're pointing over here. And yeah. then they start about talking about the woodpecker and their family and where their family would live and how many babies they have. And so it just led on to this really rich language and, and connecting back to the book um, conversation. Yeah. And, we was we probably were sitting there for about 20 minutes just having this whole conversation mm -hmm. and the only reason why we ended up stopping was because it was time for lunch but i i firmly believe that those kids would have stayed there for at least another 10 more minutes and so when people say to me oh you know children they, they won't sit still you can't do forest therapy right. with them right. it's like no you know they're if you're treating it as how you would be with an adult, then no. But if you come down or, or not come down, but if you're at that level yeah. and you see the world through their eyes, it's it's enriching. It's it's amazing. I yeah. Love, I love that story for so many different reasons because you know we hear a lot in our community how do you capture the attention, right? How do you how do you keep children focused in a yoga class? And what you're doing there is you're creating a whole multidisciplinary experience, right? It's not just about we're going to move from this pose to another, but we're going to make connections that are relevant and meaningful to them. And you're choosing a story that they're interested in. And it just happens to be, you know, a woodpecker outside, which is amazing when you take them there. And so it becomes like then a science, um, you know, a science uh, opportunity, right? And so it's multidisciplinary in a way that um, it captures their attention and their curiosity. I love that. I totally love yeah. that. That's all stemmed from that mind-body connection. So it's through their body, they're moving and learning about their the outside environment. I love that. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, that's really kind of like the basis to awareness because awareness is, is that sensory, yeah. um, you know, um, and, and when we bring in the mindful a aspect of it, you know what we we might feel you know if we're outside and all of a sudden the weather changes we might feel cold well instead of you know saying oh I feel cold and that's it right. we might bring you know if we stop and and bring in the, the mindfulness oh I feel cold because the the you know it's windy or it's starting to rain and I feel the raindrops on my skin and they're making my skin feel and um, oh look I've got goosebumps and and so it just really opens up um you know the the awareness of children but at the same time there's also that reciprocity because it also happens with the teachers yeah exactly right. and and so um you know young children are such great teachers they really are when when um I do forest um therapy guided walks I love it when there's young children there because it's like okay these are our best teachers we need That's to be right. following them yeah. and in fact next week I'll be doing my first uh preschool forest therapy 
um, guided sensory adventure. So that's going to be fun because there'll be two and five, two to five year olds with it. So. And so not, not always do we have access to go outside, but you could certainly bring those props and resorts indoors, right? So talk to us a little bit about, okay, so you've got the book and you've got your yoga poses to go with the book. Do you add other props or resources to Oh, absolutely. Um, It's funny because um, one of my providers one time I bought my my bag in with me and you know I just stopped bag of stuff. yeah and she's <laughs> like oh my gosh it's like the Mary Poppins bag um so yeah I mean we have um my most important tool and I've actually used this in adult classes as well is oh, the Hoberman sphere oh my gosh this is like if if there's a rowdy class, even if you're not doing yoga or movement, just bringing one of these out and sitting there and doing this, it's like it's it just people gravitate to that movement and it's it's wonderful. So yeah, we call this our breathing ball. Mm-hmm. Um, and I like the size of this versus the bigger one. I do have the bigger one, but this is so much more. Um, you know, it, like the little kiddos, two-year-olds are able to to use this. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then before COVID happened, at the end of our um, yoga and movement adventure, you know, we do our relaxation. I'd read them a relaxation story. Um, but they would have their breathing buddies and their breathing buddies would go on their tummies and to help to introduce this to the the kiddos um I would say okay let's put our breathing buddy on our tummy now we want to have our breathing buddy just feeling nice and calm because this is the calm part of our adventure so what would happen if you start to breathe really quickly or laugh and you know breathing buddy would go up and down and then I would say okay let's see with our breathing buddy when we take nice breath and we belly breathe what happens and the kids would notice they would be like oh yeah they're they're they're, you know softer or or slower and I said that's how we want our breathing to be we want it so that our breathing buddy is is rising up and it's calming for our breathing body. And surprisingly enough, the kiddos would connect to that more than saying, put your your hands on your tummy and feel your toe, because they wanted to look after their breathing body and make sure that it was safe. Yeah, I love and then the other thing that I would have would be an eye pillow. Um, and I made these, um, there's an insert um, and so the outside was washable. And on the inside is some lavender with some buckwheat seeds. Um, and the kids would love these pillows. You know, they, in fact, a lot of them, we'd just get into the story and they would say, um, we are going to have our, our buddies and our, and our pillows, aren't we? And they'd be like, yes, we are, but we need to, you know, we'll get to that at the end. But they were, they would check to make sure that they were there. Um and so sadly, you know, when COVID happened, I, I I could not bring these around. And sadly, I've not been able to introduce them back into um, the yoga and movement um, adventures. Um, but I will have in the training of how you can make these. And, you know, most of the daycares, preschools have, you know, these are just beanie babies. And if you don't have enough, then... I picked mine up from the thrift store and disinfected them and sanitized them. Um, And then, of course, you know, we have the yoga pose cards. (laughs) Yes. Um, And then to help with different types of breathing um, exercises, we have the breathing. Oh, wonderful. Um, and then some of the other props that I would use in specific um, times of the year and um, especially around 
um halloween time and thanksgiving is oh, yeah. a little and these were great because the kids we do a balance in walking of where they put them on their heads and see if they can walk around and balance um reverse tabletop they'd have a pumpkin on their tummy um and then we'd um i i say to them okay who wants a pumpkin challenge and if you want the pumpkin challenge, then you're going to have to try and move around, you know, with the pumpkin on, on your tummy. Um, and then, of course, scarves, got to have the scarves. Yeah. Uh, and then um, I would also have little bells for Christmas and, you know, that yeah. that was so creative. Idea. It's just so creative and so enriching to have. Yeah. And then um, I have eggs for, you know, around springtime and everything. Um, and one of the, the components of the um, adventure is that, you know, you'll have mixed ages in your group. Mm. And so to accommodate everybody, we have challenge poses. Yeah, right. And you know, we'll, we'll do it like, for example, uh, a tree pose um, will go into low branch. And I always show the kiddos, you know, the low branch feet on the floor. And then I will say, OK, who wants a tree challenge? And it's after you've done this a few times, it's like everybody wants the tree challenge. Two year olds, five year olds, they all want it. And so, you know, I say, OK, our tree challenge is where we're going to balance on one leg we're going to bring the other foot up to our calf and you know a lot of the kids won't be able to balance so I'm like you know sometimes we can hold on to things and so I'll show them holding against the wall and balancing like that and after you've shown the kiddos you know a couple of times of how they can hold on to things that they, they do that automatically I mean any balance in pose now um it's like oh they're there yeah. and um uh so the challenges are are great because they just take it to to another developmental level and then the other part of the uh, yoga and movement adventure is the kids' own poses. And this is probably, I would say, the most important part of the, the adventure because the kids get to show their own poses and they can look like anything. In fact, I've actually used some of their poses that sh they've showed me in, in yoga and movement adventures. Cause it's like, wow, that's really cool. Yeah. You know? <laughs> um, and I mean, I've had everything from hanging, hanging pine cone from the tree to pencil yeah. to pine cone that's laying on the forest floor to um, uh, uh, clocks, you know, tick tocking with the feet. Yeah. Um, and so it's it's so empowering for the kids because they get to show all their friends, you know, well, here's my pose. And they'll even watch as some of the other kids are, go, are doing it. And they're like, no, it's not like that. It's, we got to do this. And so it's it's great to see the kids do that. And of course, I join in as well, um, because that's important that, you know, the teachers um, who's ever uh, uh facilitating it join in um and so this is so great Alexis it's so great and, and you know you're gonna have kids that just don't want to and so I will say okay would you like us to come back to you and some will say no and others will say yes yeah. um I if kids are having a hard time coming up with something and they may have you know a dinosaur on their shirt or a shark I will ask them what's on your shirt and they're like oh dinosaur Ooh, would you like to show us a dinosaur pose and they're like, oh, yeah and they'll do that um and then sometimes introducing partner poses as well can really help those kiddos yeah. that just don't want to do it on their own all of a sudden they've got a friend to do it with and they're like oh I can do this. Right. Um, and and so that's that's a really important component in in the the yoga and movement adventure to have their poses. Right. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing all the 
little You're nuggets welcome. of how to incorporate yoga and mindfulness into a preschool classroom. I so appreciate you. How can we find you online, Alexis? Is it Funky Monkey Yoga? Yes, funkymonkeyyoga.net. Oh, okay. And okay. Um, if you click on the ECE yoga tab, it will bring down more um, description about the, the program. And then there's an ECE training as well. Um, and I am in the process of trying to finish off the training manual. It's yes. uh, writing a training manual has yes. been like, huh, this is a challenge. Um, yes. because one of the reasons why I love literacy is I actually have dyslexia and um, APD, auditory processing disorder, and so connection with literacy is is a very personal connection for me um and so that's you know having those different abilities has also been a challenge for writing the manual um the training I will also have uh videos that will actually coincide with the modules in the training so there'll be a full um, yoga adventure there'll be yoga snacks um, I'll also have a video of where uh, the teachers will um, see variations of the poses um, and, right. and thank you so talk. much so appreciate yeah. it thanks thank so much you. for being here appreciate thank it thank you